the select board of Monday, April 27th, 2020. Uh, first order of business is to read the governor's executive order on remote participation. This is Diane Mahan, select board chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Dan Dunn? Yes. Joe Kiro? Yes. John Hurd? Yes. Steve DeCourcy? Yes. And now for our town hall staff, when I call your name, also please respond in the affirmative. Our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Our town council, Douglas Hine? Yes. And Ashley Bur Maher from the select board office is also watching remotely. Good evening. This, this open meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth, given the outbreak of, outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce the risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gather, gatherings, and as such, the Governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature some public comment. Even if the members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the select board is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join in. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that take care not to share, screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it is helpful for participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. All of the materials for this meeting, except any executive session materials, are available on the Novus Agenda dashboard, and we recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus unless the chair notes otherwise. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, select board members, inviting each name, each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. This meeting will feature opportunities for public comment on certain agenda items. After members have spoken, I as the chair will afford public comment opportunities as follows. I will ask first members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once I have a list of all public commentators, I will call on those by name. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking. And finally, if it's okay with um, Attorney Hine, if we can continue with um, any votes that the select board takes, we'll be done by a roll call vote with uh, Attorney Hine calling the roll. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, uh, first we have on the agenda an update on town meeting as well as an update on the annual town election. I will say that um, Attorney Leone, who is our town moderator, uh, sent out today on April 27th his declaration of recess and continuation of the April 27th, 2020 meeting. Um, 
for a period of up to 30 days uh, in light of the recent COVID-19 pandemic and steps that we need to take to make everybody who does come to town meeting when we call it to make sure that uh, all those involved are safe. And But we can get the important business of town meeting conducted. Uh, we will later on in the agenda um, take a necessary step to get the appropriate um, warrant articles to town meeting as well as take action on the others. Um, so I, I won't do that now. I will say that uh, as uh, the moderator stated at our last meeting, we did meet, we did discuss um, some dates in June that I know the moderators put out. I was also um, discussed possibly down at the high school field, but the moderator also sent out to town meeting members and it's being posted through the, our town website, Joan Roman and social media and others that, um, that there's currently a bill before the legislature that would allow for some form of a virtual town meeting. Um, and that uh, our town moderator is forming a, a moderators committee to see how such a VT, virtual town meeting could work in Arlington. And he identified several issues. So um, while we have discussed having the meeting outside at the high school field, there is also a discussion about a uh, virtual town meeting and it could be one, either one, the both or something else left to be determined. And with that, if I could call on our town manager, Mr. Chapterling, to give us an update on our annual town election on June 6, 2020. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I do want to note the town moderator is on the line if you want to give him a brief opportunity to just, uh, I, I think you, you covered it very comprehensively, but uh, since he's here, if you wanted to add anything, if that's no, subject to you. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I didn't see that. Uh, is, is our town moderator available? Yes, I'm here. I believe. I um, <clears throat> don't really have anything additional to add to that. I've been working with the attorney Heim and the uh, redevelopment board on how we can handle the postponement of the articles that um, won't be coming forward if that is the way this board votes later on. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um... I only see a limited number of screens. I apologize, that's my fault. And now um, our town manager, Mr. Chapdelay. Thank you, Madam Chair. So pursuant to the board's vote at its last meeting, I've been working uh, as a liaison between the existing authorities that conduct town elections uh, in Arlington, that being the, the select board's office through the board administrator, as well as through the clerk's office and the registrar's. And I wanna give a brief update on uh, the discussions to date, some of the efforts we're planning to put forth and uh, our efforts or our plan to hear more from residents before we come back to the board with a final plan at its next meeting. So the first and probably the most important item that we've been working on is putting together a postcard that can be mailed to every registered voter in town that will have return postage paid on it. That will allow with a, a name and some other identifying information to be put onto that card along with a signature and then return to the clerk's office and have that postcard serve as an application for uh, an early voting by mail ballot. Um, I, I know there was a lot of concern, concern shared by myself as well, that there was too many steps in this process uh, to get people to be able to access these ballots. So we feel as though mailing out cards to every registered voter with, again, return postage on that card for them to be able to put, on, uh, put some information down and sign it and get it back and thereby request the ballot uh, would really cut uh, a number of steps uh, out of this process. So that's the first one that we're working on. Uh, Town Council has drafted uh, language for that card. Uh, we're working on putting, um, similar to what you might see on utility bills, uh, information in several languages, not the entire card in several languages, but information on the card saying, important, please translate this card uh, in several languages on this postcard. Uh, so we're working on that. Uh, the Assistant Town Clerk has verified that our uh, the company that does printing for elections can uh, fulfill this request and do the mailing. Uh, so operationally, we should be able to get this done. Uh, we've also discussed a strategy for locating drop boxes across town for ballot return. These would have to be very safe, secure drop boxes. Uh, again, we wanna make sure that people don't have to apply a stamp uh, if they don't want to, to return their ballots. Uh, we'll be looking at a strategy of uh, dispersing them across town and certainly finding some way to have a ballot drop, safe ballot drop at town hall 
uh, available. So we're working on that strategy as well. Uh, we're also talking, and this primarily is through conversations with the board administrator, Marie Kropelka, on our strategy for polling locations. Uh, we do know that there's three polling locations that will need to be moved, uh, precinct seven, nine, and 20. I know the board administrator is close on finalizing uh, new locations. Uh, so we should have news on that very soon for the board to act upon and then trigger postcard notification of those polling place uh, location changes. Uh, the other thing that we're working on is determining whether or not we have enough poll workers who feel comfortable uh, to work the polls that day. So that's a, an ongoing process right now. Uh, obviously, there's a good number of our poll workers who would be identified as members of the vulnerable population to the coronavirus. So uh, in the upcoming days, we'll, we'll be getting a clearer picture of just how much staff we have to be able to man the polls and exactly how that will impact our strategy on June 6th. We're also committing uh, to doing uh, more outreach and advertising than we normally would in town in terms of signage and notification to folks about the election on June 6th. Uh, additional sandwich boards in town, I think suggestions have been made at grocery stores or other, um, other essential stores where people might be visiting. We could, uh, we'll be looking into putting sandwich boards there as well as signage in places where we might not normally put signage. And then finally, uh, this Wednesday, uh, sort of a, a cooperative between the League of Women Voters Envision Arlington, the Election Modernization Committee, and also the town departments, including myself, that are putting the work in to try to make this, uh, make this election work, given the circumstances. We're going to do a listening session via Zoom on Wednesday, uh, April 29th, 7 p.m. That will give an opportunity for me to very quickly, hopefully as I'm doing right now, present the outlines of this plan, maybe with a little added information by that point, but then hear suggestions, questions, concerns, uh, from residents in town about the, the work that we're doing to try to make this election uh, run as smoothly as possible again, given the circumstances. So that's where we stand uh, today. I wanna thank uh, specifically Doug, uh, town council, who's been tremendous in advising what we can and can't do legally, uh, as well as liaising with the state secretary, uh, secretary of state's office and the office of campaign and political finance to, to be very uh, certain of what we can and cannot do uh, in terms of how we uh, manage this election. Uh, and I also want to thank all the other folks from uh, the Modernization Committee, Envision Arlington, the League of Women Voters, and the Clerk's Office who are really uh, doing all they can as well, excuse me, in the Board's Office as well, um, doing all they can to try to make this make this happen on June 6th. So with that, if the Board has any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, but I kind of lost you there for a second. Um, do this is, doesn't necessarily need a vote. I don't know if any of my uh, colleagues on the board um, have anything additional they'd like to add, Mr. Dunn. Yeah. Um, so the progress on the election sounds good. I think that that all sounds. Um, I, I, I think that sounds all really positive because I really it feels to me like anybody who wants to vote will be able to with a relative minimum of, of consternation and, and, and certainly without risk to their themselves in this way. So that sounds like a huge, like I'm very, very pleased to hear uh, about all those steps. Uh, I am curious about town meeting. Um, so I, I guess I'd heard like talk about like the football field, um, not the rink or anything, like not an indoor location, nothing like that. I was just curious what, how, how that thinking is going. This is Mr. Mark or yeah let me let me bring him back in uh, i'm sorry i just uh move, <laughs> moved him back out of the talking category all right he's mm. back um attorney leone did you hear the question for mr dunn yes i heard the question um it, it's very, basically very preliminary thought process right now it's going to be based upon a couple things one has the governor lifted the um 10 person restriction and at that point in time, are we still under a six foot wide uh, zone of safety around us? And in the Berkshires, their Board of Health has recommended a 10 foot squares that people would be in. And I thought about the football field for a couple of reasons. One, it's outside, lots of fresh air, lots of moving air. It's already wired for sound, electricity, and ACMI has the um, press booth already wired up for TV. So. It's hitting a few of our um, high points as far as public participation and um, safety. Uh, one of the biggest concerns I have is actually the town staff who's gonna check people in and hand out the clickers. 
and then getting those back. So there's a lot of moving parts at this point, but I, I would feel better doing it outside than doing it anywhere inside at this point in time, given what we know. Yeah, all of that. I, I definitely understand all your reasoning and and uh, the the good the good parts that you described there. I just worry about the weather. Yeah. Yes, we'd have to have a two days, um, one with a rain date. Um, and speaking with Attorney Heim and Al Tosti, we kind of were thinking like June, that Wednesday around June 15th, and if it rains, we could do it the following Monday, the 24th. That would still get us in within the 10 days before the end of the year, so our budgets could be finalized and we'd be able to go forward into the next fiscal year. So that's where my date theories are coming from. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, uh, Thank Mr. Kier. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um, and you know, I also I'm, I'm very encouraged, uh, uh, Mr. Manager, by everything that you've reported and the, the progress on the um, uh, making this this election um, accessible and widely um, advertised. I also had some questions um, for the moderator on on um, town meeting. Um, one of the things the chair said was that you're looking at the possibility or, or there's pending legislation around virtualization of town meeting. And I realized that, that it would be a, a logistical nightmare to have 252 people plus staff, you know, trying to zoom in for town meeting. But is, is there um, a potential opening or discussion amongst moderators of possibly having uh, satellite locations to break up town meeting and having, you know, deputized individuals on the sites to, to manage the, the speakers. So potentially if you had four sites of, of 50 people each, you could maintain social distancing and um, with deputies at each at each um, uh, site um, in communication with you to, to regulate the flow of speakers through a virtual yeah. setting. What you're describing often happens at an open town meeting where they get 500, 1,000 folks showing up. We've never done that because obviously we have the nice big town hall and we haven't had to have satellite um, um, meeting halls. I, I don't think, although it's a good suggestion, I'm not sure it would solve our problem of social distancing. Um, and, and it wouldn't make the communication issue any uh, e easier because one of our hallmarks is we are all sit down in the same area and hash things up. Um, what we're envisioning is not a lot of hashing things out this time. It's going to be quick. Come on in. Here's the budget. You all had them for a couple of weeks. Should have submitted any questions already. Let's vote them and go home before we get sick. Now, whether we do that in one big spot or we do it out in several satellites, um, it, it would be the same result. And I think it logistically would be a lot um, saner to do it in one big open spot. And in, in mid-June, it stays light till I think I looked it up, it was like 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night anyways. So everyone would be in and out of there and it'd still be light out. You wouldn't have to worry about getting dark. Great, and thank you very much. As far as Zoom town meeting, I, that to me just sounds, Un unfathomable with the current technology. No, agreed, agreed. Thank you, Mr. Um, you say I'm my sorry. Name? You say my name? Sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Hurd, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it slipped out. Um, no, I'm just, again, I'm really encouraged by the progress that we're making to make this accessible to all residents. Um, one question, you know, I, I might just went over my head to the town manager through the chair. Did, did you mention that we are sending this postcard to all registered voters in town? Yes. Yes. That, that would be the plan. Yes. And do we, so what is the plan? Obviously we're not going to get all registered. But it'd be nice if we had full participation, but just to confirm, we have the ability to supply ballots if in the event all registered voters asked for an absentee ballot or a mechanism to get our hands on those? 
So right now that that is what the assistant town clerk has told me that uh, we have you know a good amount on hand and should have access to more. I'll I'll confirm that obviously, but my understanding is yes. And we can be realistic as to what the expectation is. There just be you know in the event that we do have large participation, we want to make sure that everyone that normally votes and everyone that wants to vote has the ability to do so. So I just want to make sure that we have a mechanism in place to handle that. Um, as far as locations, you know, I, I think I tr trust uh, that our staff will make it safe for all the voters that are going to the act actual polling locations. I think something important to note is flow. I think every location should have one entrance and one exit, sort of a line in and line out that will make sure that pe the people aren't passing in and out. And I think that's just a consideration to make. In the past couple of weeks, I've talked to a number of people about the election and they say the old, old adage is the only bad idea is the one that you don't share, right? So is it feasible to have some, for people that don't get absentee ballots, but don't want to go to a physical location, to have some sort of drive-by location, whereas people would queue in their cars and could drive up to the to the location. We're actually, I'll, I'll let um, the town manager also speak to that. But we were just speaking about this. I don't even know what day it is. Every day is like a whole year. Um, but we were discussing having a possible one or two Saturdays um, where people could um, come to the town hall and. Uh, Mr. Chapelain, would you like to speak to that in terms of, you know, what the what the ballot box might be in the process that we're just beginning to discuss? Yeah, so that, yeah, that gets to that idea of drop boxes um, that was mentioned of having there be places where people could easily and accessibly drop their ballots. I, I do think, and we can dig into this a little more uh, with town council, but I don't think we could stand up a drive-through polling place where people would be able to come in, give their name, get a ballot, and vote. I think we could have a drive-through ballot drop-off place where people who have requested early voting ballots could fill them out and then drop them off somewhere. Um, but I mean, town council, please, with the chair's permission, please jump in. I, I don't, I don't think we can open polling locations other than on election day. Attorney Hyde. That's correct. So the board will need to set its polling locations if it's gonna deviate from our normal polling locations. So that'll actually have to be an agenda item at some point in time. We'd need to outline where exactly uh, folks can, can basically uh, participate in that concept. Um, there's nothing that I'm aware of that sort of allows us to have a general polling location uh, for a sort of drive-through. Um, and I guess there would also be some issues with respect to equity and access. If we were going to do it, I, I think we'd want to do it in every precinct. Um, so th there, there are some complications that we'd have to deal with. I mean, I think the good news is, is that for anybody who wants to get one of these mail-in ballots or absentee ballots, um, I think that the drop boxes, we definitely have a lot of discretion on. If I may, uh, Madam Chair, just add one thing to something that Mr. Hurd said previously. Um, thank you. I just wanna take a moment while we've got folks watching to let people know something that I think is on the town clerk's website but is important to understand is that uh, with respect to having enough ballots, if for whatever reason we ran out of mail-in ballots, uh, the law basically says that absentee ballots work the same way. So it actually doesn't matter whether you receive a ballot marked absentee ballot or a ballot marked early voting mail-in ballot, as long as they've got the same candidates and information on them, which they all will, um, they function the exact same way. So if we ran out of one type of ballot, it's okay for the purposes of this election only to enter uh, change. Thank you, Attorney Hyde. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Yeah, no, that's all good. Is this, you know, I think we're taking a lot of steps to make this election as accessible as possible for people in light of the circumstances. And you know, I just want to make sure we leave no stone unturned. So thank you for the, for the responses. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, yeah, no, I share the other board members' comments. I, I think these are good steps. There's, there's still uh, several things that need to be done. But I, think, I think we're on a good track. 
And I think the postcard, I did hear from a couple of voters last week who were concerned about an inability to print out the early ballot or the absentee ballot application. So the postcard is gonna um, address that issue. Um, and just wondering too on the, um, just getting information out. And I wanna commend the clerk's office for one of the challenges I th that they've had, and I've, I've seen it from, from my own family here is that there are some absentee voters who were at a different address when they sent in their absentee ballot application, namely students at school. So just bear in mind, if you sent in an application already and it was a different address than you're at now, clarify that with the clerk's office because you don't want it going out of state or, or somewhere else if, if, if you're around here. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, just in terms of people, and I think we should be encouraging as many people as possible to vote by mail, um, but just if we can get out the information that this is a receipt statute for the election, it's not a postmark statute. So the ballots have to be returned by election day and um, it, it, postmarked on, on election day won't, um, won't cut it. So um, if, if we, I know we're working with the clerk's office and we're gonna have a listening session, but to the extent that we can address some of those issues as well, that would be great. Excellent. Um, I will say that um, every couple of minutes, my sound goes out for 10 to 20 seconds, but I can pretty much fill in what I'm not hearing. And I haven't heard any of you say that you can't hear me. So I'm just going to continue on. But if there's a awkward pause, you can just wave to me and I'll know it's, uh, I need to move on there. I don't want to delay the meeting. Um, everything's been said, so I'm not going to repeat that. I just want to do one last round with our town moderator, Attorney Leone. Is there anything else you needed? to clarify, add, or anything else? Not really. We're gonna make the determination if it's safe and sound to go forward. And if we do, we will be ready with our truncated town meeting with three or four or five items on a big consent agenda um, without a lot of extraneous things at all. Okay, thank you. Um, just heard from Attorney Heim, and uh, before I go on to the consent agenda, I did not write it down. If the town manager, Mr. Chaplain, could tell me again what the um, virtual town forum is. I don't want to misstate the date or anything. I have a promise I'll write. 29th, two days from now, Wednesday, April 29th, 7 p.m. Okay, thank you. And we don't vote on that. So next we have our consent agenda. Minutes of the meeting, April 13, 2020, reappointments Arlington Historical, Arlington Historic District Commissions at large member, Charles Barry, term to expire 6-30-23. Request contractor drain layer license, AT Paving LLC out of Revere, Mass. And a request contractor drain layer license, GW Gately Inc. out of Wuben, Mass. Uh, first, is there a motion from any of my colleagues on consent agenda? Move approval subject to all conditions are set forth. Second. Second by Mr. Dunn. Um, any um, comments, questions, minutes, reappointments? If not, not seeing any on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Yes, a unanimous vote 5 0. We now go to appointments. Arlington Historic District Commission, the Jason Gray District. We have Dr. Allison Johnson, term to expire 6 30 23. Is Dr. Jo Johnson with us? Oh, it appears to be. Let me. Um... Okay, she. Uh... All right, should be able to talk. Yes, I, I am here. Okay. Hi, if you could, even though we're doing this virtually, just name an address for the record and, and sort of a, we have your curriculum vitae resume before us, but uh, sort of an introduction, not just to the select board, but um, everybody watching or listening at home. All right, my name is Allison Frank Johnson. I live at 24 Jason Street, right here in Arlington Center, just a few steps from Town Hall. I've lived in Arlington since 2005. I have uh, three children in the public school system, a senior at the high school, a freshman at the high school, and a first grader at Bishop. 
I am a historian by training and by profession. I teach history at Harvard University, and I'm also chair of the German department. I've done various volunteer work on historic properties in my youth. I haven't done anything like that recently, but it's part of my past and something I'm interested in. And um, I'm not sure what else it would be useful for me to say about myself at this point. Perhaps you could give me some tips. <laughs> uh, well, you certainly have a, a great deal of, of experience. First, what I'll do is take a motion from one of my colleagues on the appointment of Dr. Johnson by Mr. Dunn. Uh, move approval. Um, Thank you for volunteering. Your resume is very impressive, and I think uh, that you'll be great for the committee. And I uh, really appreciate uh, the volunteerism to, to help that committee move forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Dunn. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd? Second. Okay. Um, uh, any further questions or comments by any of my, my colleagues? Um, I, I do want to say to Dr. Johnson, Allison, this is my first appointment of someone through uh, a virtual select board meeting. And thank you for being the, the guinea person, guinea pig. <laughs> in terms of, um, I can't wait till I can meet you uh, in person when it's safe um, and we get to a new normal uh, of the rest of us. And um, I really do like the fact that you're going to be a member at large because um, I think yeah, that uh, allows you to serve in many capacities. And then thank you for volunteering for doing this. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. And I do look forward to meeting all of the members of the select board in due course. Thank you. So uh, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any further questions or comments? If not, Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. That's unanimous, 5-0. Next agenda item eight, we have another appointment, Arlington Historic District Commissions, the Broadway District. We have Beth Malofchek, term to expire also 6-30-2023. Is um, Ms. Malofchek with us, Beth? Yes, I am, Madam Chair. Good evening. Good evening, board members, Mr. Chapdelaine and Mr. Heim. Good evening. Um, I, again, the same as with um, Dr. Johnson, Allison, um, if you could just uh, name an address for the record and sort of give everybody sort of a brief one-on-one on, again, your appointment to the Historic District Commissions. Okay, Beth Malofchek, 20 Russell Street. I'm trained uh, as in, I'm trained as a teacher of uh, Russian language to non-native speakers of Russian, having achieved a professional level of Russian. Um, after graduate study, I've lived abroad extensively, worked abroad extensively, uh, administering uh, foreign exchange programs on the university level. Um, I, I think as a result of that, I acquired a fine appreciation for um, for history and for living in cities that were able to uh, preserve architecture from many eras and came to an understanding of the importance of that to the communities. So. Thank you. Um, first, is there a motion by one of my colleagues? By Move approval. Mr. Kiro, is there a second? Second. Mr. DeCourcy, I apologize. That's just my audio doing this, so I don't want anyone to think anything um, untoward. Um, um, Beth, I have seen you around town a lot, attending many meetings, CDBG subcommittee meetings, as well as um, the contact that we can have now, which is mostly through email. Um, I'm really excited that you get involved in the town this way. I know you're going to bring a lot of your expertise um, that I've seen a little bit of in, in other venues, so I'm um, I'm really thrilled once again that you're going to be volunteering for uh, the town of Arlington. Um, um, and a motion, oh, any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Ms. Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy. A yes. Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. That's 
we now go to licenses and permits. Um, I believe Attorney Hurd, uh, this is for approval. Food vendor license, Anthony's Eastside Deli, uh, 159 Massachusetts Avenue, Sab Sabich Signy. Attorney yep. Hurd, I mean, yep. Hurd. <laughs> yeah, Madam Chair, it's a, I have a conflict on this one, so I'm going to recuse myself. The current owner of the deli is my father in law, so I'm going to step out of the meeting while this one's heard. Okay, and I would just ask Ms. Marr to have that so noted in the minutes that um, prior to any discussion or motion, uh, Mr. Hurd is no longer with us at the meeting. Uh, so, um, do we have Mr. Saini here or yes? Yes, I'm here. Hi, if you could just say your name correctly for the record, and I apologize for not saying it right and just a little bit about um, coming into a great business in East Arlington, Anthony's East Side Deli. Yes, my name is Sarbjit Saini and I'm coming in to buy Anthony's East Side Deli. I've owned some previous businesses in Belmont um, called Kashish and I've had a business in um, Lexington called Kushpu in the past. Excellent. Um, and we do have your uh, maintenance plan here and reports from our different um, town departments as well as your prior experience elsewhere. Um, first, is there a motion by one of my three colleagues, Mr. Dunn? So uh, move approval subject to all conditions from departments. Second. Is there a second by Mr. Yep. Carroll? Um, any further questions and comments besides uh, welcome to Arlington and look forward to um, once again uh, in the time of this COVID-19 crisis, the uh, planning department, our economic uh, developer, um, really doing a lot of work to talk about all of our businesses, not just our restaurants. So um, I hope the community, I know the community you're coming into will be very welcoming and we're doing everything we can to keep everybody safe, but also keep our small businesses um, thriving somehow. So if not on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Carroll, Attorney uh, Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahon. Yes. That's 4 0 with Mr. Hurd. Um, Madam Chair, if I'm, I'm sorry. Madam Chair, may I add something quickly? Certainly, Attorney Heim. I, I apologize for taking a moment to do this. I just want to make sure that everybody understands we're trying to navigate a new world in virtual meetings. When someone has a conflict of interest and they recuse themselves, they ordinarily physically leave the room. The two key provisions are that they can't be heard and they can't be seen. So while people might see that Mr. Hurd is technically an attendee of the meeting, the instruction was for him to mute himself and to shut off his camera. I just wanted to make that clear that we follow the correct protocol. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So I'm assuming Mr. Hurd will know some way to get back on the agenda. We now go to Agenda item 10 for approval, pro proposal for community block grant subcommittee funding. Um, this is something that came um, up before the subcommittee that uh, Mr. Dunn and I and uh, se several st town staff and the three uh, residents um, met um, and Joanne Preston had provided a suggestion. I think we received the day of the meeting um, and upon further discussion, uh, initially, it was going to be under correspondence received, but then as we had more discussion, my colleague, Mr. Dunn with uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, uh, it appeared that um, there had already been some work done on this so that we could, uh, instead of just receiving it, we could actually um, get it moving into the process. Mr. Dunn, I'm probably not saying that everything correctly the way I should. Uh, no, I, I think that's fair. Uh, so. Um... So we got this unexpected money through the CARES Act, and um, we and the planning department had made a recommendation on how to allocate it, which will the CDBG subcommittee had considered. And then Ms. Preston brought up the problem with the safety on Chestnut Street at the near uh, St. Agnes Church, and she'd suggested that the the money be used for that. And uh, I think her suggestion that that section needs work was accurate and timely and, and, and helpful. 
but I, I think that the, but we agree, but Diane, you and I agreed, and I think so did uh, town manager Adam Chapdelaine who's there, is that really the right, the right people to take a look at this are TAC because the, tech, the Transportation Advisory Committee is really well equipped to um, make recommendations to us about problematic intersections uh, and, and, and roadways related to safety. And uh, as I recall the conversation, there was some concern about whether or not TAC was uh, well suited to handle traffic calming and traffic safety, uh, which the, and they absolutely are. You know, they've got many years of uh, track record of, of, the, of that kind of work, uh, and it's not just regulatory work they do. And uh, so I, I, I think that what we should do is we should um, I, I move that we refer the Chestnut Street mm -hmm. intersection to TAC for consideration and to report back to us. And also that we send it with a note, you know, recognizing that there was a fatality there uh, earlier this year, or was it late last, this winter, and um, that therefore it really should be treated with the, you know, the appropriate uh, speed to, 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 make, to see if we can address any problems with the urgency that's uh, appropriate. Okay, first if I could get a second, and then I think I see Joanne Preston. Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd, if I could now call on um, Ms. Preston, Joanne Preston. Yes, I, I have an update on this. And I think it's an important one, and I hope you'll seriously consider it. Um, I have been working on this with the police chief and the traffic uh, division of the police force since uh, for the last two months. Um, one thing we thought about was traffic calming. And when I saw there might be some funds available, I wrote this proposal. However, the proposal really needs to be reworked before it gets sent somewhere. And let me just uh, explain why. Um, I had a 45 minute discussion with Mr. Wayne Schoenard, I hope I got it right, uh, who's head of engineering at last Friday morning. And we came to the conclusion that the pedestrian traffic patterns need to be studied and included in the proposal. Um, I also suggested that there be some community, more extensive community input. This, however, cannot take place until the threat of the coronavirus is over because nobody's on the street and not very many people are driving cars. And so it's hard to do a pedestrian study until people are out and about. Um, we also discussed, he has a preliminary engineering uh, pedestrian safety concept. Um, and we just talked about it. I talked about some of my concerns and the problem with the signalized intersection at Mystic Street and Chestnut Street, which take three single lights to cross and cars don't often stop because they see it's a ramp. So if they take out the crosswalk at Chestnut Terrace, um, people would have difficulty walking down the street and using the other option. Um, so what I suggest is, why don't we wait until we look at the pedestrian patterns and rework this proposal, which I wrote late at night, and then submit it to the appropriate place. I think it would save a lot of time um, because they will ask that same question. And also there's really, as I discussed with the police chief, nothing that can be done at this time because people aren't using the crosswalk because they're not walking outside their buildings much. And there's, the traffic is almost null there. So um, the only reason I wrote this proposal is because I just thought they were through the stimulus uh, package some extra money in which maybe we could use a consultant. It was probably a big mistake, um, or apparently it was a big mistake. So there's nothing to be studied until there's traffic patterns. And the head of engineering felt that he could take a staff person to do this. So I would, and also I think we ought to have a little more community level input for the people who actually live there and use this. I learned a lot by talking to them. And I'm sure the traffic, I mean, the engineering division will too. So my suggestion is 
let them do the engineering people look at pedestrian patterns there. And secondly, consult more with the community, rewrite the proposal and the, give it to whomever you would like to give it to. And that can't be done immediately, but there's no danger immediately because there's okay. virtually no traffic. Thank you, thank you. And, and what I would say to that, and I, I would call on our town manager is, um, there were concerns expressed at the CDB, the CDBG um, subcommittee meeting that, you know, this is an important issue. We really shouldn't delay it. And, and there definitely does need to be a process. We do have um, a couple of options that have already been drawn up, I believe by our town engineering department. Uh, Mr. Schlickman sent an email, I think I read it today. He said it it's Sunday afternoon. Um, expressing that um, option two was something that was in favor of. Um, my, what I think needs to happen now is we need the uh, professional volunteers who serve on our Transportation Advisory Committee, our TAC committee, to take what's come out of the town from our engineering department, which are our two options, and apply their expertise. Um, Mr. Chapdelaine, am I in my sort of encapsulating the back and forth next email you and I have had? Absolutely. I, I think the Transportation Advisory Committee uh, really will provide the best of all worlds in this. They'll take, um, I mean, Wayne Schwartz sits in the Transportation Advisory Committee, so they'll take him and his expertise. They'll have the resident expertise. They'll bring in the police traffic division and their expertise, the senior transportation planner and his expertise, as well as having it be a public open meeting and being able to invite those that live near that area and use that area. So I think Ms. Preston's right, uh, that gathering data right now might not be um, effective given, given the circumstances that we are dealing with, but I don't see myself there being any harm in referring it to tax so they could scope out the work that should be done in terms of uh, data gathering and um, sort of testing what's on the ground. And then when they see the time is fit to start doing that data gathering, I think they can, can en enable that and move as quickly as possible. So I, I still believe that a referral to TAC would be the appropriate measure here. Agreed. Um, so um, first I'll state a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Herb. Mr. Dunn, any further comment? Yeah, just that I definitely agree with uh, the things uh, with Ms. Preston and the things that she thinks are important, including community input and uh, pedestrian study and survey. And I just think the TAC is absolutely the right group for that. And uh, I think, you know, if you're, if you're into that kind of thing, reading the tax website can actually be really interesting. You'll read more about traffic speeds and calming and, you know, counting methods and notes from community meetings. They do a lot of really good work, in particular, the stuff around Downing Square, which is a really challenging intersection. I learned so much from their process on that. And I, uh, I have a lot of faith in, in the work that they do. And I also have a second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd, any further comment? No, I was just going to follow up so much what the town manager said, you know, from being on TAC that Wayne Chinuar is on the committee, he's active in the participation of all the discussions. So that's the appropriate venue for it to put it on their agenda. And then, you know, there's a lot of really amazing traffic professionals who volunteer on the TAC. So, you know, we're so fortunate to have those people as a resource. So, um, you know, I think they're, they're uh, the community to handle this and to get them going as soon as possible and they'll use their discretion to determine when the best time to start the traffic council will be. Uh, Mr. Carroll? I have no further comment. I, I support the motion, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? No comment. Okay, and everything's been said before me and I certainly had my say, so um, any further questions and comments, if not on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. 5-0, unanimous vote. We now go to, for approval, acceptance of bequest from the Marion D.H. Sylvester Trust for the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. We have um, some correspondence from the officer of the treasurer and collector of taxes, Phyllis, Phyllis Marshall. i um, not sure if she is with us. She is, yep. Um, Ms. Marshall, if you could explain this to the board and to everyone um, on the meeting. 
I will, thank you. Um, the Mount Pleasant Cemetery is um, one of the recipients of a bequest from the trust of Marion um, Sylvester. And um, although the trust is important to us, it's to uh, preserve the uh, portion of the cemetery known as the Paul Francesco Dodge lot. And um, there's a, this is a typical request. The amount of the bequest is about $55,000 for maintenance of that area. And um, because the last decedent um, passed without family members, the trust has requested um, a new trust to disperse the funds. And we have been asked to sign off on that. Um, our share is about 1% of the estate. Okay, thank you, um, Ms. Marshall. Uh, first, is there a motion by? I move approval. Mr. Kiro and seconded by Mr. Dunn. Um, okay. uh, Mr. Kiro, uh, any questions, comments? Yeah, I, I actually, I, I guess the proper motion is move acceptance, correct? Yeah, but I, okay. I have no further further um, comments other than, um, uh, you know, to say that, uh, you know, I think we're very grateful to uh, the, um, uh, the the individuals who um, who left this to the town. Um, uh, seconded also by Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn, any questions or comments? Uh, I don't, but I did see that. Notice that uh, Mr. Heim had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Attorney Heim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. I just want to clarify one thing. As a part of this uh, acceptance, um, we are essentially taking a vote to. Um, support the appointment of Deborah Lincoln as the new trustee. We represent only 1% of this trust, but the law essentially requires that there be a unanimous appointment of uh, the, the, the basically new trustee who really won't have much to do with the town. It's, 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 once the gift is made, it's primarily going to be administering the rest of the trust. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Uh, do I need to amend my motion um, uh, uh, through you to the town council? Do I need to amend my motion? Yes, yeah, so it's a, a move approval for the receipt of the funds as well as to um, appoint. Support the appointment uh, of. What? Of Deborah okay. Lincoln. Deborah Lincoln as, as trustee. Um, and that's still seconded by Mr. Dunn. I don't see. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hurd? Um, just to clarify through the chair to the town council. So this, once this new trust is getting established, it's getting dispersed, this bequest is getting dispersed to the town free of trust, correct? It's not gonna remain in trust? Pretty much, yes. Like the prince? <laughs> <laughs> the cash has a little more value? Okay, just wanna make sure. Okay, Mr. DeCourcy? Uh, no comment. Okay, on uh, Mr. Carroll's amended motion to move approval to receive these funds as well as the appointment, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions or comments? If not, roll call, Attorney Heim. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Kiro? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Yes. Did you hear? Yes. Okay, that's a unanimous vote, 5-0. Um, next, we have acceptance of gift for Arlington Fire and Arlington Police Department mail card, gift cards from an anonymous donor. Uh, Attorney Hyde. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the short version is the um, Arlington Fire Department and Arlington Police Department received anonymous donation of approximately $7,550 worth of gift cards to local Arlington restaurants. Um, I contacted the State Ethics Commission about this. Uh, they have an advisory, for anybody who wants to read it, 19-1, uh, which talks about gifts to public agencies. Because the donations 
are anonymous and they're to an agency. Actually, the anonymous part doesn't matter that much, but because they're anonymous and they're to a public agency, uh, they have to be approved by the select board. And my recommended sort of motion to clearly define the parameters of the gift to our first responders from this uh, anonymous source, which hopefully will also benefit our restaurant, is to request the select board to vote to accept this donation to the Fire Department, Arlington Police Department, and other first responders, and to direct those departments to utilize these gifts cards evenly among on-duty staff for use in buying meals for same. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, is there a motion to? Uh, so moved. Moved by Mr. Carroll to acceptance of this gift. Is there a second? Second. Second. <laughs> by Mr. DeCourcy. Um, uh, Mr. Carroll, uh, you made the motion. Any further questions or comments? Well, we just thank thank you to the anonymous donor. Um, it's very considerate, and I think we all know how hard our first first responders are working um, uh, right now. And thank thank you, Mr. Heim, for for um, passing it through the um, ethics commission to uh, you know make sure that we're we've crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's to allow this to go forward. Thank you, and I have a second by Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, I also want to thank the anonymous donor and, and continue to recognize the great work of our first responders in town. Mr. Dunn? It's a gift to both both sides and it's most welcome and thank you very much. Mr. Hurd? Again, thank the donor. It's amazing time and time again to see how generous people in this town are. And then just thank the first responders who are doing so much for our community right now. It's well deserved and you know anyone that uses stop and shop knows you often see the fire truck out there. So that will keep them out of the supermarket as well. So thank you. Okay, uh, on the motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Roll call, Attorney Hines? Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Kiro? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Unanimous vote. Agenda item 12 is closed. We now go to agenda item 13 for approval, removal of trees on front green at Arlington High School. Uh, our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine? Thank you, Madam Chair. So the board has a letter uh, before it from the chair of the high school building committee, Jeff Thielman, requesting the board's authorization to remove a number of trees in front of the high school. Uh, there was a hearing held, a tree hearing held back in February. There were three letters received uh, in lead up to that uh, hearing, uh, objecting to the removal of the trees. Uh, at that hearing, uh, there was a very detailed, comprehensive presentation given by the landscape architect working on this project in regards to the trees planning to be removed as well as the, so at least to some degree, the planting plan for the remainder of the site. So what we're asking for is the board's uh, permission uh, to remove these trees. Um, and, but we do have with us tonight, Daniel Norman, uh, again, from the project's landscape architect firm to provide a little more detail and answer any questions the board might have about this, uh, about this project. Uh, Mr. Norman, name and firm for the record. Sure. Uh, my name is Daniel Norman. Uh, the firm is Crosby, Schlesinger, Small Ridge. And uh, if there's anything else that you wanted to add to what the town manager said, or um, if, you, uh, if any of my colleagues have questions for you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Norman? Um, I'm not sure if there's much more I can add other than some detail, if that's uh, uh, in, you know, of interest of the board, um, but I'm here certainly to answer any questions. Uh, if I may, I mean, what might be interesting, Daniel, is if you, if you can talk a little bit about um, the replanting plan and um, you know how, how we are focusing on trying to make up for the caliper lost with these removals. That's right. Okay, sure. Um, so, as part of the um, early bid package um, to get the uh, new high school going. Um, the front green is, um, is where uh, a number of trees will be removed. Uh, approximately 45 healthy trees in total in that area, um, as well as uh, 15 additional trees, both behind uh, the CVS property to the east and the stop and shop property to the west. Um, we are um, still in the construction document phase of the project. Um, 
60% of the way through. And currently we are um, showing uh, an addition of 200 new trees to be planted at the Arlington High School. Uh, the majority of which will uh, be replacing the trees that are removed in the front lawn area. Uh, but there are still a number of trees that will be uh, planted throughout the property as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to, before, uh, what I want to do is, since this is a public hearing, um, come up with a list of people who wish to speak on this. I do want to state that um, our tree warden held a public hearing on February 26th of this year, and th there were no objections um, registered or noted at the time. But subsequent to that, um, I know um, the tree warden and others have um, received written correspondence from at least three individuals. And I, I just want to state to people, not only with this agenda item, um, it, it seems as though there's some miscommunication and I, I apologize, I want to clear that out that, you know, if you send in a piece of correspondence, you know, to a tree hearing, to um, CDBG subcommittee, to a committee on, on the school side, um, that isn't automatically sent to the uh, select board's office. The only way that happens, that it comes to our attention is that um, you also email us or regular mail us or um, we don't receive everything. So everything isn't always listed as correspondence received as well as we have to close the agenda and give the proper 48 hour notice. So I noticed, I think it's because of the current times myself um, and my colleagues. And if it's just me, I try to do the proper channels, which is to go through the select board and forward to them. So I don't contact my colleagues directly, but um, once the agenda closes Wednesday afternoon, um, that's all the official documentation uh, the board has received as well as any members of the public. And I'm not saying you can't send an email at the last minute or anything like that, but um, I know there have been uh, some that misunderstood that as a, a slight or ignoring um, information. It's just that we have to follow the open meeting law, have to follow the, pr the process. So um, please, whenever you get anything into us, if you want it to uh, appear, uh, send that in whatever form you feel comfortable with to the select board's office. So um, Mr. Chapterlane, uh, it is a tree hearing. Has anyone indicated um, they would like to speak at this hearing? Yes, uh, Susan Stamps has her hand raised. Okay. Um, anyone else? Uh, no, not right now. Okay, so, uh, Ms. Stamps, uh, name and address for the record or name and group affiliation for the record? Hi, my name is Susan Stamps. Can you hear me? Yes. yes we can. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. 39 Grafton Street and a member of the tree committee. And I'm not speaking for the tree committee, but I'm sure, I, I, I'm sure my fellow members would agree with the um, I, I just wanted to remind everyone and the of the um, the people who will be running the project of uh, cutting down the trees and the trees that uh, can you hear me? Yes. The town um, did adopt a policy um, which a lot of projects have been good at following, some not that good. Um, but the tree warden needs to be consulted throughout this project. And I, so I would appreciate that the uh, tree planting uh, team uh, consulted with the tree warden regarding the species to be planted and various other um, uh, characteristics of the trees and the planting and protecting other trees also that are on the site from any damage. So that was number one. And number two, also to remind everyone that the town also adopted a policy that watering plans would be in place for every uh, town project involving trees and that that would be part of contractual obligation related to the, the, um, the installing of the trees. So whether it's the, the people who plant the trees, they have a two-year watering obligation or the town understands they don't and the town has agreed to take it over. It's just an item that needs to be discussed and agreed upon. And that was it. Thank you. Um, anybody else? 
If not, um, first, is there a motion from one of my colleagues? Oh, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I move approval of removal of the trees as requested by the school high school building committee. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. Hurd. Um, uh, Mr. Dunn, any further comments? Mr. Hurd? Nope. Mr. DeCourcy? No. And Mr. Caro? No. Okay, uh, if not on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Uh, roll call, Attorney Hine, please. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Caro? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahon? Yes. That's a unanimous vote on agenda item 13. Item 13 is closed. Next, we go to uh, for approval, Article 50, endorsement of the Community Development Block Grant application, CDBG. Uh, there was a little bit of confusion out there. I got some emails and um, Facebook messages. Uh, I think Don Seltzer was one of them. Um, that uh, at our last subcommittee meeting, where Mr. Don and I and the other members discussed funding of the CARES um, Act, CV, as well as two other um, reprogrammed and allocated funds. Um, he was looking for the public hearing and I explained that this tonight endorsement of CDBG is our initial 1.1 million um, before the coronavirus and the Federal CARES Act um, happened on us. Um, and that the uh, meeting that we had just, I don't know, again, was it a year ago, <laughs> a week or so ago, that that is going through the public process and we will, it'll be on an agenda in May before May 15th, which is the deadline. Um, with that, uh, I don't know, Mr. Chaplain or if it's a, and or anyone from planning? Uh, so uh, planning has an ARB meeting tonight. So I'm, uh, I'll be covering this and fortunate to have the chair and vice chair who also serve in the CDBG subcommittee. So what we're looking for tonight is the board's uh, endorsement of the CDBG application and what that, that really has two parts. It's uh, favorable action on the FY21 budget, as well as favorable action on the report to town meeting. And the combination of those two actions um, fulfills all of our requ uh, federal requirements, as well as putting forward the budget for next year. So um, Chair Mahan, you just hit it on the head, but I'll, I'll repeat it just for the sake of repeating it. Um, this is the standard process that we go through every year. Um, this year, like last year, we've gone through an enhanced process where we have three residents uh, who serve on a committee along with Chair Mahan, Vice Chair uh, Dunn, myself, uh, and Jenny Rate, the Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, we go through every single application. We score them all uh, with uh, a metric that's been put together by our CDBG administrator. And then after that scoring, uh, go through a long decision-making process of what will be approved and then what the funding amounts will be uh, from all of those categories. So that's the process we went through this year and that's what's before you tonight. Uh, there are some other materials attached to this agenda item just to inform the board about the CARES funding as well as some of the reallocated funding that was discussed at the last CDBG meeting. But again, like Chair Mahan said, that'll be brought back at a future meeting of the board. Uh, I think we're actually aiming, it, it was actually tonight's materials that needed to be addressed before May 15th. Uh, the CARES materials and the reallocation materials will be brought back most likely at the board's May 18th meeting. Uh, so tonight, I'm happy to answer any questions the board might have, uh, but uh, tonight what we're looking for is favorable action again on the FY21 budget and the draft report to town meeting. Okay, um, Mr. Dunn, anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, just a couple things. I just wanted to mention uh, the criteria that we use when we're ranking these. Uh, and, and Adam mentioned it in, at a high level, and I just think it's worth talking about what the individual criteria are. Their community need, resources and capacity, and how much they encourage partnerships with other organizations, what the cost benefit is, what the whether or not they leverage funds from other surfaces, uh, sources, excuse me, whether or not they're self-sufficient, and whether they're new or whether they're uh, or, or whether they're like a um, repetition of an existing program, and so. Uh, and we go through and we get, grade each one pretty hardly, harshly, and then we like, or I shouldn't say harshly, we, gr we grade them fairly. And then at the end of it, we rank them all and we say, okay, where did they all turn out? And I think some of them turn out really like kind of a little bit as you'd expect. And you're like, yep, I expected that one to score well and then I expected that one to not do so well, but there are also some surprises in there. 
Um, and uh, I really think that our criteria and our evaluation, I think I mentioned this one has really gone up and I think that we maintained that standard this year. Uh, and the second comment I got was just that I re received an email correspondence saying that the CDBG subcommittee um, hadn't considered the Whittemore Park um, money and, and, and I would actually uh, beg to differ with the, with the, the author of that email. Um, and but it was particularly memorable because it was right after the, this board had its public meeting and one of the people who spoke at the public meeting wanted to speak also at the private subcommittee meeting and we didn't let her speak because we'd already heard the speech and the public and the subcommittee meeting is a working group as opposed to a public hearing. Uh, and so I just wanted to, I guess, assure my colleagues and the public that in fact we had discussed it at that subcommittee meeting um, in late March. Uh, I think that's all I got. Oh, I, I guess uh, one more, sorry, about two, uh, one more thing, which is just uh, to remind the board that uh, this actually has the vote, six voters, because the town manager is also um, an allocator of the CDBG uh, money. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Um, and uh, I'm going to shortly ask if there's a list of anyone who wants to speak on that. Again, this is something I got an email on, um, but I believe she may possibly be one of the speakers so I won't take her questions but I got it uh, was sent this afternoon a little bit before four I really would um, implore people um, if you're sending anything you can always email all of us um, but for some reason I didn't check my email one last time at six o'clock um, oh no I checked it right after it came in that's right but um, um, just for the uh, sake of record keeping and um, it really, if everything could, could get to at least CC to the select board office. Um, and if that doesn't happen, I think I have close to 100% track record of doing that. Um, but again, um, all the materials that are legally supposed to be considered are, are what we receive in our packet um, 48 hours in advance. Uh, but uh, so we'll go from there. Uh, Mr. Chaplain, is there anyone raising their hands for uh, yes? Yes, uh, Beth Malofchik has raised her hand. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, not, not at this time, no. Okay. Um, again, just name and uh, for the record, Ms. Malofchik. Beth Malofchik, 20 Russell Street, town meeting member. I did attend both subcommittee meetings when we were still having meetings in public. Uh, that was moderated by, at that time, the CDBG program officer in the planning office. I'm not sure he's there any longer. Um, and then I did attend the meeting, public meeting, again, when we were still having public meetings, um, led by Aaron Swerko, where I shared my thoughts. I, uh, Ms. Mahan does have my detailed letter of late March which I submitted to Ms. Zwerko as we were instructed to do so. And I was very uh, shocked that I, that was not reflected in the documents um, before you on the Novus agenda. Um, so I attended the first uh, or the two uh, subcommittee meetings and I was uh, surprised that the merits of the Whittemore Park application for the $125,000 of HUD CDBG monies was not discussed in the before the public. Not, I'm not speaking of the of the uh, design of the park or anything, but the merits of HUD CDBG monies for this phase two of the application. I attended both meetings. I stayed the entire time. Joanne Preston was with me at the first meeting. Uh, Patricia Warden was with me at the second meeting. Patricia Warden attempted to make comments. They were shut down by uh, one of the committee members, but the merits of the application uh, for phase two of uh, this park redevelopment were not discussed before the public. And that is what I take issue with. In particular, the granite, Amphitheater steps, uh, which I think in the application are referred to as a retaining wall. Had I had the opportunity at those subcommittee meetings, I would have asked whether the um, Disability Commission had uh, reviewed this application because it, um, I don't understand how that could be included 
particularly in CDBG money application, uh, granite amphitheater stairway that's not accessible to all people. So that's my main concern. Um, uh, again, these monies, as, as we're well aware, are for low income and moderate income uh, residents. I know we've got Winslow Tower nearby and Chestnut Manor nearby that um, could potentially become less accessible to this park if we lose that crosswalk. I would hate to see that happen. Um, but that's my main uh, concern that uh, the merits of the application uh, being worthy of CDBG HUD monies was not discussed, was not given a full vetting before the public. Thank you very okay. much for, for, for um, listening to me. Thank you, Beth. Um, Mr. Dunn? Uh, well, I just want to say that, well, I agree that we didn't go into the details in the, of the individual of the plan and we don't go into the details of really any of them. Uh, we did score that project just like we score all the other ones. Yeah, so there, there's a matrix I think was referred to before that came out of planning this, uh, to my memory, six different categories. There are three different um, boxes you could put them in. Um, we all come in and share what we have in the box and we literally discuss each one of, you know, why people voted it as, you know, highly useful or neutral or, or you know, not income producing all that. So um, we, we definitely did go through that um, over the course of two meetings. So, um, but um, I understand Ms. Miloschek's concern. Okay, um, Mr. Chatelain. I also want to add that uh, the Granite Amphitheater steps that uh, Ms. Palofchik is mentioning are, is not part of phase two. It's part of phase three, for which a funding source has not been requested or pursued yet. Um, so that uh, that issue she's raising is not germane to the topic before the board tonight. Thank you. Okay, but we'll make sure we follow it through when we do get to that phase. And um, I know we'll get answers and make decisions based on those and other answers. Um, first, is there a motion? by one of my colleagues to approve, Mr. Dunn? Uh, move approval of the recommendations for the CDBG uh, funding. Is there a second by? Second. Mr. DeCourcy. Um, Mr. Dunn, any further comments? No, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? I did just want to thank the subcommittee for their work on, on this and bringing it to the board. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Kiro? No further comments, thank you. And Mr. Hurd? No comments. Okay, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, roll call, Attorney Hein, please. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Kiro? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. That's a uh, five Chap zero. I'm sorry, wait, Mr. Chapdelaine. <laughs> Sorry, Madam Chair. Mr. I, I keep forgetting I have a vote. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 6-0 um, unanimous vote on that Warren article here. Now we're going to um, final votes and comments uh, in the midst of our uh, COVID-19 coronavirus crisis. Um, we've sort of spoken about this at several meetings, what the board and what the uh, town moderator referred to earlier is that we need to um, at, at the need to get the business of the town done, we need to make sure uh, under the law, even though we have been given some latitude, um, that we get um, the budgets and things that really need to be addressed. Um, but also bearing in mind, um, trying not to expose, overexpose um, town meeting members, department heads, and anyone else that would attend. So um, I'll let my, as we go through the course of this, what we um, plan on doing is voting on the basically budget um, warrant articles that are before us that will encapsulate our anticipated June meeting that's still being discussed how that that will be held and um, the meeting that myself and um, Mr. Chapdelaine, Mr. Leone and Eric Helmuth and Al Tosti were there. Um, the, the town mo moderator after discussion from everyone, um, I think Attorney Heim was there. Um, that for the remaining Warren articles, um, in order to not take any sort of vote 
that could possibly subject them to having to wait for a year or possibly two years to refile if it was a citizen article on zoning. Um, a vote of no action would um, be the proper vote for those remaining articles so that when we have what we anticipate will be a special town meeting in the fall. And I don't want to announce a date or anything for that because we still haven't um, finished with June. A vote by this board of no action is not saying we're not in favor of it. We're just trying to do what we need to do legally. So in whatever months, two, three, four, um, come up, um, those proponents, those citizens, won't have to wait for the annual spring town election. Um, they can be taken up there. And I'm going to ask Attorney Heim to please correct any misstatements I made or explain it better than I did. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, there's no uh, mistakes. There, there is an update with to um, at least one piece of it. So the basic concept here is that we don't want to uh, prejudice anybody from bringing their warrant articles uh, before a full town meeting once we feel like we can safely have a full town meeting with the typical type of discourse that we would expect. But whether we have a town meeting on the football field distanced in 10 square foot blocks apart over the PA system, or we have a virtual town meeting or whatever other option, uh, the essential concept would be to have only the essential financial business go before town meeting and to take either a no action vote or basically another type of vote um, relative to zoning articles that would make sure that everybody's articles are understood to be basically just being put on hold until the next special town meeting or non-emergency situation town meeting. Um, there's a slight uh, update with respect to zoning articles. I won't belabor the point too much. The Mass Moderators Association ended up recommending that zoning articles be referred to a committee rather than take a no action vote. So you wouldn't have the complexity of dealing with this assurance that you know the planning board won't block things from going to town meeting for two years. Um, with respect to the select board, there's no such uh, issue. Any uh, article before the select board which has a no action vote taken on it, whether it's uh, in substance or just in form, it doesn't matter. You can bring that same article back to the select board immediately at the next special town meeting. Um, if the select board's so inclined, uh, the select board could even vote to place all uh, warrant articles before the select board this year on uh, the annual town warrant, on, on the next town warrant uh, as you know, a gesture to sort of, you know, um, uh, make sure that folks understand that this is basically just so we can have an abbreviated town meeting where we only address those articles necessary for the financial operations of the town, some of the borrowing that we need to do for capital projects, and um, things like CDBG. Okay, um, Mr. Chaplain, did, did we cover everything before I start to craft what I think will be two separate votes? Uh, you both covered it very well. The only thing I would add is that uh, so one financial piece was covered tonight with the CDBG vote. Uh, at the next meeting, we'll be bringing back the revolving fund votes, as well as the parking benefit district expenditure votes. And then that should encapsulate the financial votes that the board is taking. Okay. And um, please correct me if I'm wrong, Attorney Heim. First, what we want to do in order to get what I'm calling the budget, the business of the town Warren articles um, into this June meeting, um, I believe I would get a move approval on articles 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and 83. Is that correct? Uh, you'd be voting no action on all those articles. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So now that I've totally confused the process and done it backwards, um, uh, and you might first, my, one of my colleagues wants to make a motion of no action of what all the articles I just mentioned. So moved. Mr. Dunn? Is there a second to Mr. Dunn's? Second. Was that Mr. Hurt, I believe? Um, uh, Mr. Dunn, any further comment? Uh, 
you know, this is one of those things where there's so many comments, but uh, nothing germane. Um, a second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd, any comments? Yeah, I just want to say we don't take this vote lightly. You know, a lot of people have put a lot of time and effort into these Warren articles, and we look forward to having a little more time to discuss them up until the next fall to, uh, to uh, you know, get the ins and outs of these articles. So. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick question for Attorney Heim. On any articles that we had voted previously, this this vote, while it may be the same as some of the earlier votes, we're not going to have any comments on any of the Warren articles. It's just basically, it's no action, basically without prejudice to put it back on the warrant for the next uh, special or annual town meeting. I would go a step further, Mr. DeCourt. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, may I? The attorney, hi. Um, I would go a step further, Mr. DeCourcy. You are taking a no action vote, even on those articles which you had previously approved. You were essentially saying that the only business, that you were not gonna make any subjective determinations about which articles we think, you know, we might wanna go forward, which articles we favored, which articles we didn't. You're basically saying that unless it's a finance article, we are voting no action so we can have an abbreviated town meeting um, and we're retroactively voting no action, even on those articles that we had supported so that town meeting will really hopefully be uh, one or two uh, basically consent agenda st style votes of budget, capital expenditures, something of that nature. Okay, th thank you, Attorney Hyman. Thank you also for, it sounds like you're working with the moderator on the uh, zoning issue and that was um, good that that could be worked out because it, uh, I know chapter 40A made it a little tricky in terms of procedure. So um, well done on that. Um, Mr. Hurd? Nothing further. Okay, and I just want to, in case anybody at home is watching this, when we talk about the no action vote on the Warren articles, contained within those war Warren articles are six resolutions um, that are coming before us as Warren articles. Those are also included um, in this no action to be taken up um, further down the road. And I do want to note that um, the town moderator did have communication with all of the 10 registered voters, uh, Warren articles, including the resolution, um, explaining the process if they have any questions. And I, I believe I saw one or two people um, not objecting, just wanted further clarification. So um, we've, um, I believe we've done everything to make everything aware. Um, am I correct with the, on that, um, Mr. Chaplain, Attorney High? Yeah, I, I want to just thank the moderator for um, crafting something and getting it out to town meeting members and specifically article proponents. It's basically asking for their cooperation. We're all sort of in this together and whatever form of town meeting we're going to end up having is going to be really, really challenging to execute. And so um, he put out that notice to all town meeting members as well, uh, current town meeting members, as well as uh, to article proponents to just explain this is what we're doing and this is why. Thank you, Attorney Hyde. Um, so on a motion of no action uh, by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd, any further comments? If not, roll call vote, Attorney Hyde. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. We don't get the town manager on this one, right? <laughs> That's 5-0, sorry, I had a little fun with um, now we go to correspondence received. We have a, a correspondence from Brian Rustacia. Rustacia? I always say his name wrong. Um, request temporary amendment to traffic rules and orders, mandatory sidewalk use. Is there a motion to move receipt by? So moved. Mr. Carroll, is there a second by? Second. Mr. Dunn. Um, uh, Mr. Chatelain, our town manager. Well, I, I just want to let uh, both Brian and the board know uh, we are actively working on this request. Um, I had a Zoom call this morning with Mike Rademacher, Dan Amstutz from the planning department, uh, and Chief Flaherty, to, um, uh, as well as Jenny Rate from the planning department to talk about this request. Uh, we're looking at uh, potential for both lane reduction and sidewalk, temporary sidewalk expansion on Mass Ave, 
as well as the closure or closure slash, uh, slash shared street designation on neighborhood roads uh, throughout town as a, a number of other communities across the country are doing. So uh, we're trying to figure out what the safest most uh, or safest and least resource intent, uh, intensive approach will be. Um, we're also trying to figure out what the right way to get public feedback is on this before we implement it, but doing so in a quick and efficient fashion. So uh, hopefully very soon we'll have more to come on this. Uh, we think it's a good idea. We think it's gonna be necessary as the weather gets warmer uh, and we still have social distancing restrictions in place. So uh, we're actively working on this and I hope to bring back more to the board very soon. Thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Um, so motion by Mr. Caro. Mr. Caro, any further comments? No, no further comments. Second by Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you, all set. Um, Mr. DeCourcy. No comments. Mr. Hurd. No comments. Okay, on a motion, move receipt um, with the um, information provided by our town manager. But motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Uh, Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Yes. 5 0 vote. We now go to new business. Starting from my virtual left, Attorney Heim. Uh, the only piece of new business that I'd like to raise um, is in addition to thanking all the folks who are working so hard, whether they're folks who are members of our town staff or they're volunteers and residents who are trying to communicate with all of us, uh, is that in order to set our polling locations, I believe we may need to um, get out a notice uh, before May, on or before May 15th. So as we work to um, finalize those polling locations through the board office, it may be necessary to convene the board uh, outside of its regularly scheduled meeting. I just wanted to make the board aware of it. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Um, Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a few brief updates on the town's uh, COVID-19 response. Uh, we continue to meet uh, daily via Zoom with the leadership team uh, on both our response locally, as well as uh, our understanding of what's happening regionally. Uh, today, there was an update where we are, uh, we've put in place today uh, a face coverings uh, advisory. Uh, we're strongly advising those who leave the home to wear a face covering to protect themselves and others. Uh, we also are uh, expecting that next week, the Board of Health will take a vote uh, using its statutory authority to make that a mandatory face covering uh, policy. We're seeing a number of our neighboring communities do that. Uh, and from a public health perspective, um, our public health, uh, local public health experts think it's uh, a reasonable measure to put in place. Uh, though some may think it is extreme or a bridge too far, uh, we do believe it is in the best interest for these next couple of weeks or more uh, to keep everybody as safe as possible and, and break the transmission of the virus. I also wanna mention um, there's much, uh, much increased conversation at the regional level and at the state level about safe reopening at some point, um, which will likely be a phased reopening. Uh, I feel very lucky that I've been asked to chair an advisory group of other town managers and mayors uh, to the governor and lieutenant governor, uh, which will be uh, discuss meeting internally for the first time tomorrow, uh, and then hopefully talking with the administration soon. And I'm also part of a working group with an, uh, another group of mayors looking at a set of guiding principles that we'd like to adopt regionally uh, in terms of reopening that we can hopefully get uh, on the same page with the state so that we're all doing this in lockstep and that we don't have border wars in terms of what's open and what's not open. So I think there will be a lot to come in terms of data over the next few weeks, as well as uh, news and potential strategies for how we look at a phased reopening uh, over the course of the next, uh, next several months. So stay tuned for that, but there is more to come. And then the final thing I'll say is uh, we have uh, back by popular demand on Thursday at 2 p.m., another virtual town forum. Uh, in terms of the town's public health and public safety response. We had um, about 140 people participate last week, uh, ran out of time in the hour we had allocated, so we've now allocated an hour and a half uh, to do another virtual town forum to try to get to as many uh, questions as possible from town residents. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, 
first of all, I did see the, the town forum that the uh, town manager ran last week. And I, I want to thank the town manager, Director of Health and Human Services, Christine Bongiorno, Chief Flaherty and Chief Kelly. Um, it was a very informative um, hour and, and uh, it, it, that's still available, but just the, the things that between the health department and police and fire have to do to adjust and, and, and provide services safely um, is remarkable. So I, I, I wanna thank them for that. And I also wanna recognize, we, we had a discussion early tonight about how important voting by mail is gonna be and how we're encouraging it. And, and there's a group in town that one thing that has remained the same throughout uh, this crisis is we get mail every day. And, and the postal workers in town, I wanna thank for, for their service. They're, they're, they're unheralded, but they're, they're out there every single day. And uh, they're gonna be a big part in this town in terms of both getting out applications and, and making sure they get back to town hall. So, so thank them for their efforts and, and for everybody, we still have a ways to go here and uh, let's keep working together by staying apart. This, this is very real, it's affecting a lot of people, but uh, let's work together, check in on your neighbors, check in on your relatives. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I don't have anything except for sharing uh, my heartfelt thanks to all the people who are working so hard to keep us safe. Thank you, Mr. Hearn. Just again, want to thank all the town staff, our, all of our medical professionals in town. And again, as the weather night gets nicer, there's a lot more temptation to relax on some of the social distancing me mechanisms that the town's put in place. And just to remind people that, you know, this is really the peak and this is a time that we can make the right decisions and the wrong decisions so to continue to to make the right decisions so we can get to a, a phase opening as the town manager mentioned. Um, and then on a personal note, I'd like to thank our, our delegation at the State House, Senator Friedman, Rep. Robert Rogers, and Rep. Garbley, particularly Rep. Garbley, because I've texted him every day for about a month about virtual notarizations. The governor mm -hmm. signed that today to allow real estate closings to happen via Zoom or other electronic means, which is a big step in helping to stop the spread of the virus because of the thousands of closings that are happening in Massachusetts a day. So again, on a personal note, I'd like to thank our delegation for supporting the legislation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was also going to note the uh, public health forum. I, I was also able to uh, tune into it and um, it demonstrated what I think we've known for many years that 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 part of what makes us so strong as a town is that our public safety and our public health officials work so closely together. Um, and there is really kind of an unbroken bond. And I think seeing them in that forum, you could see the the the, the level of really strong and close cooperation between um, all of them. You know, and it's worth noting that that both our police and fire chiefs, although they've they've been in public safety for a long time, and are are um, you know tried and true veterans, um, they're, they're both new at the tops of their departments and they're, they're taking on this, this big challenge and, and uh, really rising to it. Um, so uh, thank you again. I'm glad there's going to be another uh, one of those. Um, the only other thing I, I would like to um, just share, I think we all felt great sadness to hear of the passing of John Flood. Um, I think... Um, Many people who tune in and watch our meetings have undoubtedly gone to um, uh, forums up at the senior center where John has worked for the last number of years. Um, it's kind of the, the uh, caretaker and he was a long time facilities um, uh, professional here working for the town. But he was also a select, a select tone and he um, at every veterans event, um, Patriots say John was the guy singing the national anthem or singing, um, uh, God bless America, such a, a beautiful voice. So I know that he's up there somewhere singing with our, our, our late colleague, Kevin Greeley. Um, he, um, he did well. He raised a family that, that also in turn provides a, a lot of service to the town. So I just want to share my sadness and, and, um, and thank you, John, wherever you are. We know where you are. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, is that it? I'm sorry, Mr. Carroll. Is that it? Yes. 
Okay. Um, I don't want to leave everything on a, on a sad note. Um, also, condolences to uh, our representative, Sean Gobbley, on the passing of his dad, Jim. Um, who's a great man, as well as there are other Arlington residents um, that unfortunately we've lost some COVID-19 related, some not. Um, um, and um, those are people, family members, loved ones. So um, as concerning my remarks, um, the manager and others sort of touched on it, but I can't stress um, it's people in Arlington, uh, residents, small businesses that are really coming together in ways that um, I kind of expected, but not to the degree and to the dedication and, and the, the outreach uh, in terms of trying to serve people um, during this crisis. Um, all of us are here, uh, members of the select board available to you, but I cannot stress enough if you can go to the town website, www.arlingtonma.gov. Uh, you can check there every day, Monday through Friday, usually around a little after five for the coronavirus updates from our town manager, from our health and human services director. There's also links there where you can get town notices, email alerts, submit a question. Um, as well as information all of us provide um, individually. I did speak to, again, I need to really stress to people that, um, you know, there's a process concerning our select board agendas. You know, please follow that process, um, starting with the select board office. Um, to that end, I did receive uh, on Wednesday morning an email from one of our town residents, Elizabeth Dre. Um, I called her back day after it's been a little over an hour on the phone um she had request wanted me to put on two agenda items on the select board agenda and i exp explained the process for that it turns out one of her requests we were already discussing with the election update uh the second request which um i said i would not avail myself the opportunity of but i would pass on to my colleagues um elizabeth had envisioned that the virtual town forums would feature um an individual member of the select board um, and that that meeting would be covered by ACMI and residents could call in and she referenced it in in lieu of the fact that um, she and any other resident can no longer call a member of the select board and um, have coffee with them she's trying to replicate that so I told her I would indicate that to my colleagues, I did say I didn't feel that was the purpose of the virtual town hall forums. Um, me replicating meeting her for a cup of coffee was sitting in front of Lexington High School for over an hour returning that phone call. Um, so I just wanted to make my colleagues uh, aware of that. Um, and there are other ways. Um, I was thinking when I was talking to any, anyone for more than an hour before the coronavirus um, pandemic, I would get one to three letters, snail mail as they call it, largely from seniors or low income families um, who for you know don't have access to internet um, and do research on that, sometimes make calls and connect them with the appropriate people, as do my colleagues. And now um, I'm, we're all getting that just about daily. Uh, it's how the day goes by that uh, something doesn't come in. So, um, Yes, there's technology. We need to avail ourselves of that and be there, but we also have to make sure um, we're reaching everyone. And then the last thing I'd like to leave with um, the town manager, I've gotten this quite a few times from residents who um, have asked me, where can I donate money? You know, my spouse and I, my partner and I, fortunately still can work and would really like to donate money to, um, especially people who are renting or people who need help um, paying their bills. Uh, I have been referring them to not so much the fuel assistance program because I know that that's pretty well funded and the need on that is waxing and waning. Um, the uh, Council on Aging, the AYCC, as well as um, referred them to the Arlington Cambridge Somerville ARCS um, chapter of RIM, which is the Refugee Interfaith Ministry which one of the people actually used to serve on it when she lived in Somerville, so she was gonna get reinvigorated to that. But what I would say to the manager is they were asking, is, is there any way we can donate money um, to people needing help, help to pay the rent, make the bills? I know we're um, 
putting aside proposing CDBG CARES Act money, and I assume we can't co-mingle public funds, we can't direct them to that, but I just wanted to put out there that I've gotten that request quite a lot, and I always refer them to the town website. I don't know if you want to say anything about that tonight or maybe at a future meeting, you know, sort of think about it and talk to the leadership team. So the, the Arlington COVID-19 relief fund should be launched in the next two days uh, to fulfill the exact purpose you just described. Uh, we're just putting the finishing touches on the website where people would be able to donate online. Uh, and, the, and the key focus would be on people who are struggling to uh, make their monthly payments, as well as uh, potentially a portion also being able to help small businesses that are struggling. So um, yes, that, that exact fund that you're describing should be launched very shortly. Right, and I, I'm pretty sure we're going to have our restaurant bingo card um, launch coming up soon also. Mm -hmm. So people have asked for that. So with that, the next meeting is, next scheduled, regularly scheduled meeting is next week, May 4th, 2020. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn by. So moved. Mr. Carroll, seconded by. Someone wave. Mr. Hurd. Um, Non-debatable um, on a motion by to adjourn by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Hyde. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Good night, everybody. Be Good safe. night, everyone. Good night.